Welcome to another episode of Courageous Conversations Live. I'm your host, Pierre Quinn, and on Courageous Conversations, we leverage the stories of entrepreneurs, of creatives, and leaders to help you live with greater courage. Joining me on this episode of Courageous Conversations Live is Karen Hardy. Karen, thanks so much for being my guest today. Absolutely, Pierre. Thank you for having me. So we're going to jump into our conversation in just a few moments. I want to invite all of our friends who hang out with us on Courageous Conversations Live on LinkedIn or on Facebook or on YouTube, wherever you are, hop in that comment section. Let us know that you're joining us. We'd love to shout you out as we're having this conversation. And as we're chatting, if you got any questions for Karen that come up during the course of our dialogue, Feel free to throw those in the comment section as well, and we'll take a few of those questions. So, Karen, set this up for us. Give us a snapshot uh, about who you are and, and what you do. Absolutely. Um, again, I'm Karen Hardy. I'm an interior designer here in Richmond, Virginia. And in a nutshell, we want to create and transform any interior space that you've dreamed of. So as an interior designer, that's what we do. We are here for you. Um, I service residential and commercial clients. Okay. All right. So Rochelle's checking in uh, with us uh, saying what's up here on LinkedIn. She says she's watching. Rochelle, we got to have you on soon to join us for a courageous conversation. So, all right, Karen, you got you to gotta walk us through. Okay. You, you know, Growing up, did you say, hey, I want to be an interior designer? Was that on your career goals, your vision board? You know, was that on your mind as, as a young person growing up? Um, honestly, Pierre, absolutely not. <laughs> um, I did not realize that this was something that I was interested in relatively until middle school. Okay. Um, so I took home economics. They don't teach that today. But <laughs> back then I took home economics and in the sewing portion of the class, I mean, I just lit up. Now, when it came to the cooking part, you know, and we're gonna put that aside. I was still <laughs> sewing while she was teaching cooking. Okay. So, and I just grasped onto that. I loved to sew. And um, in high school, my mom brought me a sewing machine. So I used to get up on Saturday mornings, make an outfit to wear for the day. I mean, I just love sewing, fabrics, texture, color. And that's what I've always loved. But um, that wasn't really the forefront of what I was looking forward to do. That's just something at the time I knew I just liked, you know, as a hobby. Mm -hmm. So um, in high school, um, unfortunately, my mom was diagnosed uh, with colon cancer. Mm -hmm. So at that time, you know, I'm making her dresses you know, so that her pump for her medication would go into it with the pocket and you wouldn't know she was taking it. Yeah. And I was just sewing and taking care of her and just trying to spend some time with her and realizing because of her illness, I now wanted to be in the medical industry. Um, so I went to college and became a registered nurse. And um, from there, I was in cardiac surgery ICU. I'm still with my mom and um, taking care of her. And then she passes at the age of 45 mm. um, with colon cancer. And that was pretty devastating, you know, cause you wanna get in that industry. You wanna try to make a difference. You wanna try to change, get into research or something, you know, when someone that you love that's so dear to your heart, you know, is suffering with that. So, um, so I'm still nursing. Um, and then in between then, of course I find love and I get married. And I'm um, still nursing and just having a wonderful time. Life is great. Um, and my husband and I, we go to build a home. So I'm excited. You know, I'm talking to the nurses and the doctors in the ICU. And I'm telling my husband, we almost finished. And it's time to pick all the finishings, the colors and the furniture and the draperies. And I'm just excited. And he's like, um, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> he's like, OK, Karen, let me pull you back in. He said, listen. He said, we can't get that right now. We, we can get the house and we need to put up some sheets at the window. Woo. I needed to go to the ICU when he said I need, we need to put up some sheets. And I'm like, well, that's not what I want. Yeah. He said, you know, we can't afford that right now. So st uh, still I'm thinking, and he said, well, I tell you what, 
you go out there and you research it and you're going to see right now. That's not, not something that we can do maybe later. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I went out there and I looked and I was like, OK, <laughs> you know, it is kind of pricey and maybe we have to wait. And then I thought, wait a minute, I'm not waiting and I'm not putting up any sheets. You know, let me let him know. So I went back to him and I said, listen, boo, I said, if you just give me about fifty dollars, you know, mm -hmm. you know, five hundred. I was I wanted 500, but I was trying to start at the low end, you know, so I worked my way up. I said, if you give me that and let me make them, you know, then I can, you know, I'm serving you. We're not spending a lot and I'm getting what I want. Yeah. He looked at me like a deer in headlights, you know, like, OK, I told you we had no money to waste. Well, of course, he didn't know I could sew. Cause mm. who's sewing when they're dating, <laughs> you know, who's, who's making stuff when they're, you know, they're courting. Yeah. So he broke down, of course, and he gave me the money. And what I did was I went to the library, you know, no computer. I wasn't Googling it. I went to the library, did my research to find out what went into custom window coverings, furniture, pillows, and things like that. Mm -hmm. After my research, I pulled out my sewing machine that my mother purchased me when I was in high school and I started sewing. And I mean, now I'm excited again because I'm getting what I want. He's happy, you yeah. know, so I'm going and I'm in the ICU and I'm bringing all my little paint swatches, my fabric swatches, and everybody's excited for me as well. So when the house is finished and when it's time to move in, I had custom window coverings at every single window. Wow. At every single window. So I'm just so happy. I'm still in the ICU. So then I have an open house. I have one for like family and mm -hmm. then one for the nurses and doctors at work. When everybody came, they was like, oh my gosh, you know, because they was putting it together, me being in the ICU showing watches, but they didn't, they didn't really imagine what they were going to see, what they saw. Yeah. So then I, they started asking me, well, what you doing for me? And I thought, of course, you know, then I, another doctor said, listen, my wife has been talking about custom and pain and art. He said, can you help her for me? And I'm like, sure. I loved him. I would have did backflip for this surgeon because he was like the best. Mm -hmm. Started working with her and it became a spiral effect. And I started to think, and my husband said, listen, he said, if you keep, you know, working at night, someone doing the day. It's going to be a hobby, you know. He said, so you need to make a decision. Are you going to be a registered nurse or are you going to go into interior decorating? I wanted to say, listen, school was not easy yeah. and I did not pass every class. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I wouldn't try to give it up like talking about it. Mm -hmm. So after praying about it and, you know, really contemplating because really what was coming out was what my a love was initially. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought about it. So I went ahead and I, I, I cut back, cut back to that. Didn't do it anymore. And here we are. I've never looked back. So, yeah. Wow. We got, man, you got to tell what book here, what book is that story <laughs> in? <laughs> you know, not quite, but you know what? You, you know, plant the seed. Yeah. So it may be coming out. <laughs> okay. We got John checking in with us. Uh, John's in the Chicago area. We got Elijah checking in with us. He is a Courageous Conversations live alum. So it's good to see people checking in with us on LinkedIn. If we got our Facebook and YouTube family, feel free to check in with us in the comment section as well. So how hard was it for you to make that decision, that pivot? Because there are a lot of people now who are thinking, okay, Karen, I'm listening to you, your story. They might have already gone to your website underneath your name and the banner. And hey, you had a great career in, in the medical field to give that up to transition and becoming a full-time entrepreneur. And, you know, the, the check is not guaranteed and you have to work and create a system and form a team and do all of that. How hard was it? How did you navigate that to go from idea, I can do this as a hobby, I can make some money on the side, to building out the enterprise uh, that you have today? That's a very good question. And um, my husband willing to say the same thing, you know, you know, how are you going to do this? But you know what I feel is that when you have a passion for something and it's a burning desire, mm -hmm. 
you need to at least explore that fact. Mm. Of should I or shouldn't I? Yes, you should. Because if you don't, you would never know. OK, now my husband's father was an entrepreneur mm. and he would always tell us it's worth making a dime for yourself than 25 cents for somebody else. Mm. Because eventually you're going to surpass that 25 percent and nobody can put a price or on a value of what you worth. Mm. So I had the support, of course, of my husband and my family. And, you know. It, it, it needs to be a driving force in you, mm -hmm. you know, because to me, when I'm working, it's not work, you know, because I absolutely love what I do. So I would say, make sure, number one, is that what you want, that you're not chasing the dollar. That's another thing, because if you're doing it to chase the dollar, it, it, your outcome is not going to be what you want it to be. But if you're doing it because it's a passion, you have a calling on your life, then yeah. guess what? Yeah. The dollars will follow you. Mm. Yes. Speaking of, of dollars following you, let's, you know, let's give, you know how people are in these internet streets. Let's give some receipts. Let's talk about maybe a couple of the projects. Sure. A couple of the projects you worked on and you were like, wow. Like, yeah, this is why I'm supposed to be doing this work. Well, you know what? See, for me, it's, it's the dollar, but sometimes it's not always the dollar mm -hmm. because it's that gratification of seeing the eyes of my client and looking at that space that they've always wanted. Of course, the dollar does make a difference. Okay, yeah. The dollar <laughs> makes the difference. <laughs> but um, some of my larger projects, um, when I'm working with the Jefferson Hotel, say, for instance, and, you know, it's a five star hotel. You put your work in there and it's seen all over the world, you know, so that's wonderful. But when you're talking about a residential client, mm -hmm. because of the resources I have and because I've been in this injury for over 30 years, I can offer my clients. So much more mm -hmm. than um they, they don't have to come with a perceived value. You can tell me if you said, Pierre, Karen, I have $5,000, then and I really want this space done. Can you make it work? Well, what I will do is, of course, I'm going to be the advocate of your money. I'm going to give you the best quality and design for the budget that you have set before me. Mm -hmm. But my thing is that as long as when I'm done, and you'd be like, oh, my gosh, Karen, this is awesome. I am totally happy with it. That is so gratifying. Whether you spend five thousand on a project or you spend fifty thousand on the project. So, yeah, I know we were talking before and there are a lot of people who when they hear custom, yes. they automatically say, oh, I can't afford it or it's going to be too complicated or, you know, we'll never be able to manage that. Can you? demystify that for us how how accessible is custom home furnishing custom design custom wall treat uh window treatments yeah. how accessible is that for you know middle class folk who you know just bought a house or or looking to redecorate and they're thinking i'm just gonna go down to Kohl's or whatever else and just you know something on the wall because right. it, when I hear custom, it seems too out of reach. So can you demystify that for us? I most certainly can. I grabbed your heart when I said. <laughs> yes, like, oh, my gosh. So. All right. So let me just let you know that this is a perfect question because I teach. And when I'm teaching to my students and I'm kind of letting them know I'm pulling back all the onion, the skin, mm -hmm. because guess what? If you go out right now and you go to Bed Bath & Beyond mm -hmm. and you purchase something for off the shelf, you purchase a rod, you purchase everything you need, you're going to spend roughly about anywhere from $350 to $500. Mm -hmm. That's off the shelf. If you came to an interior designer who has the access, who has professional drapery workroom, who has the resources, you can get that same custom for that same price. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> exactly. Hold on. See, Yes, yes, sir. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. And what happens is when you buy over the counter, when you buy um, from all these stores that are not custom, you're purchasing what they think is going to sell, what the color is or the Pantone color for that year may not be the color you like, 
you know? So they're putting all this stuff, it's called merchandise, and they putting all that out there. So you have a limited choice of what's there. Wow. But when you come to an interior decorator, she can have and create any color that Pierre likes or that client likes within your budget. Now, I do own my own professional drapery workroom. Well, mm -hmm. what is that, Karen? I have seamstress that fabricate everything that I create for you. So we don't have any middleman, no outsourcing. If you want some pillows and you want to say, Pierre, courageous conversations, I got you. If you want um, some window coverings behind you with your logo in it, I got you. So it doesn't matter because we do it all right there. We don't send it out. So that cost comes down tremendously. Then I have resources where I buy all fabrics and all furnishings and accessories at cost. Wow. And I pass that cost on to my client. So the biggest thing I can tell people, don't discount yourself mm -hmm. before you find out. At least reach out and find out what is it that you can get before you just say, oh my gosh, I can't afford custom. And by all means, don't go look at a picture on my website and say, oh yeah, she bad, but I know I can't afford her. <laughs> you don't know that. You do not know that at all because some one person's budget may be different than another person's budget. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. Man, I was just that the whole Beth, bad and be, bad, bath and beyond thing just literally just threw me. And I know it's throwing a lot of people who are watching the live or the replay of this, that that access to to, to custom is available to you. You just got to be willing to have ask the right questions and talk to the right people. So in light of that, Karen, I know there's a lot of different ways we can go. And I want to be respectful of the time that you have sharing with us. Who should reach out to you? Who should connect with you on LinkedIn? Who should go to your website listed on the banner? Who should follow up with you on Facebook? Who should book a consult or conversation to learn more about your work? Who are you looking to engage uh, at this stage of your business? OK, so um, if it, I would say probably if it wasn't for about a week ago, if you owned a home and you're looking to have nice quality um, furnishings and custom window coverings, you want you want everything well put together. You want a space that you absolutely love. You only want to purchase it once. But I have recently been contacted by some women who live in an apartment. They want their space just as nice. So they say once they get it, once they move to that home, they'll be able to take it with them mm -hmm. because they're purchasing. So I have a lot of clients where we may be in one home and I may rework the window coverings to fit the next home because it's custom. So anyone again who owns a home wants quality, custom um, design, they want a space that they're going to absolutely love then yes, they need to contact my contact me. Now, I know you're in the Richmond, Virginia area. Yeah. Are you only servicing clients in the Richmond, Virginia area? How just how far does the custom work and consultation travel, Karen? OK, so let's see. I have a couple of clients in Colts Neck, New Jersey. Um, I have some in Florida, um, Pennsylvania. So mainly up and down the East Coast. So really, it's almost like there is it doesn't matter where you're located. Mm, okay. Let me just say that it does not matter where you're located, because as long as I can have a conversation with you, find out what it is that you want, then I can handle all the rest. I have different um, resources where if I say I'm ordering some furniture for you and you live in um, New York, mm -hmm. where I have storage in New York where I can order those pieces and have them in a storage until I get there to come and transform your space. So it doesn't matter where you live. Wow. Wow. Man. Well, well Karen, what if I just, what if I'm interested in the profession? You know, I, I'm just interested in the profession. Maybe I got a sewing machine in my garage or maybe, you know, I've been on Pinterest and, you know, want to get into, into, into the field or dabble. Um, what's, are you, are you open to a conversation, an email reaching out to you? Absolutely. And let me tell you, sewing is a dying art. And see, once you can sew, your mind has expanded beyond what the average person know how to create. Mm. Because see, you know how to make it. I can look at something, pick it apart, know how it's made, 
and be able to pull it together. So I would say, A, don't sleep on it. If yeah. you have something you want to do, you can contact me. Um, there are different programs at I teach at University of Richmond, um, the interior decorating program. There are programs that you can take there. You can go. If you co contact me, I'll let you know some. There are some. Um, what, what is it? Community programs. I know where they have little teaching classes of sewing and maybe color um, because all of that. When you pull all that together, you just have an awesome, awesome package. I, I want to throw in this also. I know we've been talking about interior design and sewing and fabrics and Pantone colors. Listen, also, if you are an entrepreneur, regardless of your field, regardless of your industry, and you need some insight, you, you need to find a coach that can walk you through some practical exercises to get your business off the ground and to move it in the right direction. You need to call Karen. All right. I'm just putting this out there. I'm just putting it out there. She can help you as an entrepreneur. She's got all the receipts. She's got decades of experience of, of helping, of, of growing a business and being and being recognized in major publications. So reach out to Karen. I know it's on the banner underneath Karen, but you know, some folks don't read. They just want to hear. So if you could give us that website as well, uh, what's the best way to reach out to you? Yes, I'm going to make it very easy. My website is weloveyourspace.com. That's weloveyourspace.com. You can reach me on Instagram, Accenting RVA. That is Accenting RVA. And of course, LinkedIn, I'm under Karen Hardy. But if you need anything, please don't think she may not answer the question. Don't think I'm not going to you know, hit her up because she ain't going to you know, respond to me. Stop discounting yourself. Reach out. If I can help in any way, I most certainly will. I know our conversation, Karen, has been a big help. And I want to thank you in advance for all the people who are going to come your way. And I know you're going to pour into them. Some of them are going to come with requests for custom, uh, custom design. Some of them are going to come for insight on how to get into the industry. And some are going to come with, with questions about how to be a better entrepreneur. So I'm thanking you in advance, oh. all those people who are going to come your way. Thank you so much for hanging out, for being a part of this courageous conversation, for being a courageous conversation, conversation alum. And sharing your gift with the world. I thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pierre. You be blessed. All right. We'll talk soon. Okay. Okay. Thanks.